Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Phyllis Johnson. I am the CEO and owner of PKJ Consulting, and I'm going to talk about how to obtain funding for your small business. So first, we're going to go through a brief introduction. We're going to talk about how to prepare to get funding. We're going to talk about the different options for funding, uh, the qualifications needed, the importance of finances, some tips, and then conclusion and any questions that you guys may have. So um, I stated before, my name is Phyllis Johnson. I am the owner and CEO of PKJ Consulting. We provide accounting, bookkeeping, payroll, taxes, startup and consulting services for entrepreneurs and small business owners. I'm located in Las Vegas, Nevada, but I was born and raised in Oakland, California. Um, and I have a bachelor's in business administration, accounting and finance from Pepperdine and an MBA with emphasis in entrepreneurship management from UNLV. I'm also QuickBooks Online Elite Pro Advisor, IRS tax provider, and I have my online teaching certification. And I'm excited to be uh, able to speak with you guys today. And thank you so much for the opportunity. So in order to get uh, funding, the first thing that you want to do before anything is you want to make sure that you are prepared. You want to make sure that your finances are in order. So when I say are your finances in order, I mean for your personal and your business life, uh, for your personal life, you know, what is your what does your FICO score look like? Are you paying your bills on time? How do you keep track of your bills and your income? You know, is that information ready to go in order for you to get funding? Now for your business, what is your, how do you keep track of your finances? So same thing, you know, um, how do you keep track of your income, your expenses, your debt, your assets? Are you using an accounting-based system um, or are you using Excel spreadsheet and Google? So you want to make sure that before you even start the process that your finances are going to be in the best uh, capacity that they can be for you to even apply to get funding. The second thing you want to do is you want to understand the requirements and have a plan, depending on what type of funding that you're going to get, whether it's a grant or a loan or um, investments, you need to know the requirements and then you want to make sure you have a plan. So if you're getting a loan, for example, you want to look at loan applications and make sure that you are working towards getting all the requirements so that when it is time to apply, you're not scrambling to do so. Necessity. What do you need it for? Um, a lot of times when a person starts a business, one of the first things they always say to me is, okay, I got my LLC and I have my EIN, so where do I get money? And I always say, well, what do you need money for? Are you a service-based business? Are you a product-based business? Do you need money to hire people? Do you need money to get a building? Like, What is the reason as to why you need to get funding? Because that's going to be critical in what type of funding you're going to apply for. Then it's, do you know how and when you will pay it back? Now, this is very important because what happens is just because you have access to money. So think about it as like a credit card when we were in college and you're applying to get credit cards, right? But you don't know how you're going to pay it back or when. And if you ever really sit down and look at like how much you're paying in interest over years and years and years, it's because you just may have applied for something but didn't have a plan. So you want to make sure that you know when you'll be able to pay this back that the money that you're going to get is going to be used in a way to grow your business. And then also, should you get funding? And the reason this one is critical is sometimes you can bootstrap your business so that you don't even have to apply for funding. You can use your own uh, money or other things to grow your business, and therefore you're not having to struggle to figure out how to pay back something. So here are some funding options for your business. Savings. Loans and gifts from friends and family, credit cards, crowdfunding sites, grants, business loans, angel investors, and venture capitalists. So now I'm going to go through all the different options and discuss your opportunities and how you can get funding for each one. So the first one and the easiest one to get is savings. That is the easiest and quickest way to get access to money for your business. Now people will say, well, how do I build up my savings. One of the first things you can do is if you're working a regular job is just have automatic deductions from your paycheck go into your savings account so that even before you're able to touch any of the money, just have some of that money go into an account and build up that account so that you can use it for your business. Tax returns. Um, instead of using your, you know, 
money that you get from a refund for TVs or vacations, if you're serious about starting your business, take that money from your refund, buy something fun a little bit, but then the rest of it, put into your savings account so that you can start your business. Um, if you truly believe in your business and you have a hard plan um, and your retirement is a little bit of ways away, tap into your 401k plan with a plan on how to pay it back. And then another option is to get a second job. So for myself, when I decided I was going to start my business, um, I started doing tax returns and consulting on the side. And I would just take all that money and I was just putting it into my savings account so that I would have at least three to six months of funds so that when I decided to leave my full-time job, I wouldn't be struggling to you know, make um, pay all my bills so that when I started my business, I would be able to do so in a non-stressful manner. The other way to get money is family and friends. Now, I say this with the caveat because we have seen so many court shows where people are suing their family and friends because they borrowed money, um, they didn't take it seriously, and then they always say they're going to pay it back with their tax refunds or some other method, and they never do. If you're lucky enough to have family or friends that believe in your business and they're willing to give you money, treat it as a real loan or investment. Document the plan. Give that information to your family or friends. Um, pay them back as necessary. And just like in any life situation, right? Let's just say you borrow $5,000 from an uncle um, and maybe your car broke down and you're not able to make that payment. Don't avoid that person. Just reach out and communicate with them. The reason for this is simple. You borrow that money from your uncle, you never pay it back. What does that uncle do? He tells all your family members, don't borrow any, don't give her any money because um, she's not going to pay you back. And so maybe three years down the line, you need another $5,000 for some amazing event that you have an opportunity to go to. And now you're not able to borrow the money from anyone. So you want to make sure if you're lucky enough to have this opportunity that you treat it like a real actual loan. The other ones is credit cards and equity. Now, if you're not good with credit cards, meaning your personal finances are not in order or your FICO score is low or you have high uh, credit card balances, don't do this method. But if you're really great with it, you can find a low interest rate credit card or even take equity from your home to start your business. Gifts. Now, this is a little known fact that you can have someone gift you up to $17,000 of tax-free money for your business. Now, this one's big because that means that that person is giving you the money. Um, you're not paying taxes on it. They're not paying taxes on it. And then the other option is crowdfunding. Now, this one requires way more than some of the other ones. Um, typically, it's for a product-based business. And here are some of the websites. Um, it's not an exact, um, exact uh, entire list, but you want to do your research. So you have GoFundMe, Seed Invest, Start Engine, Patreon and Indiegogo. Now with this one, right, you have to have a plan. So that goes back to what I was talking about in a previous slide. You have to have a plan. It's for like, um, you want to create some type of product. You're going to put that product on there and people are going to fund your project to create that product so that you can get get it out there in the market. So this is going to be somewhere where you may, you know, want to make sure that you hire someone who's going to help you, you know, post that product so that you can get revenue and funding for it. Now let's talk about business loans. There are a lot of different types of business loans that you can get for your business. One of the first one is just a standard business loan. So, you know, you go into your bank, you apply for your business loan, you fill out the application, you're giving your financial documents, they're looking at your personal information, they're gonna give you a standard business loan that you have to pay back with a specific interest rate in a certain amount of time. The other one is SBA loan. So the SBA loans are geared towards small businesses. Now, one caveat is typically you need to be in business for two years to be able to get an SBA loan. Um, but one of the things that the SBA loans is going to require is that, like I said, they're going to look at your personal information. They want to know how much debt you have, how much debt do you hold, how are you keeping track of your business information. Um, it's a very exhaustive application, but if you're able to get an SBA loan, um, the interest rates are really low. A line of credit. Now, what a line of credit is, it's kind of like a credit card, but not really. So think of it as maybe you need money to fund operations in your business continuously um, because you're working with a company that maybe pays you net 45 or net 60, but you need to have money to 
pay your payroll. What a line of credit is, is you apply one time and you have access to, let's say, $50,000. After you pay back uh, forty five or 20000 of that 50000 it keeps cycling over and over and over again. So instead of with a typical loan where after you pay back the loan and you need a new one, you have to reapply, a line of credit is for eternity and you just keep paying it back and you keep um, having a line of credit and it also increases as necessary. Equipment loans. Now, equipment loans are very specific, so it's a lot easier to get if you're, for example, a construction-based business because it's just for equipment for your business. So if you're a service-based business, you wouldn't typically be able to apply for this. So it makes it a little bit easier to receive one because the number of people who will be applying for this type of loan is less than a standard business loan. Invoice financing. So what invoice financing is, and you have to be using some type of uh, accounting software to do this, is you send invoices out. Now, if anyone has any um, federal contracts or federal, uh, you know, they're lucky to work with the government, most governments do not pay any invoices do upon receipt. They're usually net 30, 60, 45. Um, I have clients where it's net like 240. They it, they take a long time to pay. So what invoice financing does is the company will look at, first of all, um, how do these people pay you at all, right? So how often are you getting paid? Are they paying the invoices? And if so, and you qualify, they will give you the money up front. So let's say you send an invoice out for $10,000, it's a net 45 invoice. You're able to get all the money up front minus their typical like half of percent to 1% uh, interest fee. And you have it immediately so that you can use the money. Then when the company pays that invoice, then it ends up going back to the invoice financing company. So this is a good opportunity to use if you have uh, companies that don't pay you on time and you need access to money immediately. To take advantage of this, like I said, you need to be using some type of software like QuickBooks so that the company can analyze if you're able to qualify. Now, the next one is merchant loans. So if you're using Square or PayPal or some other type of merchant account to sell your products, um, they're going to always offer you a merchant loan. Now, be careful with these, and I'll explain why. Um, let's just say you sell T-shirts and every day people are buying T-shirts and they're just every day buying them and they're $20. A merchant loan is going to say, hey, we will offer you five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 because we've looked at how much money you're bringing in on a weekly or monthly basis, but we're just going to take a little bit off the top of each and every sale. So instead of making $20 for the shirt, you're going to make, let's say, $19.25, and then Square and PayPal will still take out their regular fee. Now, this is a great opportunity if you need the money, but just know that in the long run, you're going to end up paying back way more. Um, than you typically would with any other type of loan. So you just wanna be kind of wary of this because they take the money out every single day versus you paying like a flat fee every single month. And then there's personal loans. A lot of times a person will say to me, hey, um, I really wanna start my business. I don't qualify for any of these other loans. How do I get money to start my business if I don't qualify? If your personal finances are in order, you can take out a personal loan for your business invest it into your business, grow your business, pay that personal loan back, and then you'll be able to qualify for other loans in the future. And then last but not least, there's something called microloans. So um, what a microloan is, it's typically no more than $10,000. It's a very small loan that is typically offered by your local chamber of commerce. So here in Nevada, there's a Women's Business Center. I know in San Francisco, there's definitely a lot of chamber of commerce companies and things of that nature where you can apply for a microloan. They're looking at your uh, collateral what your credit is and your character, meaning in character, how often do you pay your bills back, those type of things. But they're a lot easier to get than any of these other loans because they're really for small business owners. So what are the requirements to get a loan? Well, the first thing is, I keep talking about this personal and business credit score. Your credit scores need to be solid to an for you to get a loan because if you have a 520 or a 600 or lower or something of that nature it means that you're not typically paying your bills properly or on time or you may not have any credit so when you're applying for these loans they may not trust that you're going to be able to pay those things back on time 
Um, your annual revenue. What is the annual revenue for your business? How are you keeping track? Are you using a software like QuickBooks or Wave? Or how do you know besides just looking at your bank statements? Um, I say this with any webinar that I've ever done. Looking at your bank statements will never, ever, 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 ever tell you what the revenue is in your business. It's not just simply looking at 12 months of statements and then adding that. And the reason for that is when it says what the deposits is, that can also include any loans you may receive. That can include any money that you transferred in from your personal bank account. So that deposit number may be a mix of different things. So that's not your actual revenue for your business. So you want to make sure that you really know what your revenue is for your business when you're applying for anything. Um, do you have a business plan? Now, no, this is not required for some business loans. But in essence, it's going to help you answer that question of how am I going to pay it back? When am I going to use the money for? Um, when am I going to use the money? How am I going to allocate it? Um, what is my growth plan for the business? So you want to have a plan before you take out a loan. Um, and then also some loans do require that you have a very strong business plan. Um, specifically, uh, standard business loans will typically ask for one. Collateral and personal guarantee. So if you are an S, uh, S Corp or an LLC or a sole prop or a partnership, just because you have an LLC and an EIN does not mean they're not going to look at your personal information. They want to know if your business fails, which 50% of businesses fail within the first two years, they want to know if your business fails, how do I get my money? So they want to know what type of collateral do you have? Do you own any assets? Do you have a house or a car or a property? Um, what can we take from you if you can't pay the money back? The other thing they want to know is they want to look at your financial documents. They want to look at your tax returns. So if you haven't filed tax returns in a couple of years, make sure to do so. They want to look at your financial statements, um, which I've mentioned a few times. So they want to look at your profit and loss statement. They want to look at your balance sheet. They want to look at your cash flow statement. The other things that they want to do is they want to see your business bank statements. And then they want to look at your financial projections. So this is what I talked about earlier with your business plan is what are your projections for the business? If we give you this loan, how is it going to increase your revenue or are you going to use it to pay down your debt? And then they want to know about your business specifically. What type of business do you have? How many years have you been in business? How big is uh, the size of your business? And what industry are you in? So the best way to kind of get all these requirements is work on it in advance, create like a Google Drive or Dropbox or whatever you have, put all this information in a folder and keep it up to date so that when you're applying for a loan, all you're doing is just pulling all the information and clicking on apply and going through the process. The other thing that you want to do is if you're using a software, you'll be able to have access to your financials, your statements, your projections, uh, your, your annual revenue. So a lot of this, and then you're about your business. If you're using something like QuickBooks, half of this information will be able to pull from there. Now let's talk about the fun one, which is grants. There are a hundreds of thousands of grants out there for any type of business to be able to obtain. Now, there are different levels for grants. There's local, state, corporate, and federal. The smaller the size of the grant or who qualifies, the easier it is to get that grant. So earlier, I said I'm originally from Oakland, California. Um, and so let's just say I was starting a ice cream business and I want to apply for a grant. Well, if I was going to do so on a federal level, it'd be every single person in the United States applying for this federal grant. The competition would be a lot tougher. Um, let's just say I was applying for a corporate grant and maybe that company was um, offering it for everyone. Still, now there's maybe less people that will qualify based on what the corporate restrictions are, requirements. Um, and let's just say it was a state grant for California, which has millions and millions of people. So, um, but now it's a lot smaller than the federal grant, right? But if it was a local grant and it was for ice cream companies in Oakland, California, the chances of me being able to qualify and apply the competitions a lot less. So you want to start looking at local grants um, because they're a lot easier to obtain. Now, here are some of the different types of grants. There are grants for startups. There's economic development admin, there's your local chamber of commerce, there's grants.gov, there's a FedEx small business grant, and um, I think Verizon has small business grants. There are plenty of grants for startups out there for you to look for because once I, like I said before, a lot of times people are just starting their business so they don't have the money to 
you know, get the business going. So look for grants that are tailored towards businesses that have been um, for zero all the way up to two to three years. Then there are grants specifically for women. Um, and this is just one example. There's the Amber Grant Foundation. So this, these are grants just for women only. There's also grants for minorities. So um, there's a minority business development agency. There's the National Minority Supplier Development Council and then SBA funding. You want to get certified if you are a minority or a woman. It would be easier to qualify for these grants if you are a certified minority-owned business or a woman-based business. There's also grants for veterans. So there's a lot of different types of grants that you can apply for um, instead of just looking at like the bigger grants. Now, the number one question I get is, where do I find grants? There are plenty of places to find grants. One thing you could do is subscribe to newsletters. So maybe you find a company that offers different type of grants, subscribe to their newsletter so that when you see the grant that you qualify for, you can grab your information and apply. Join business groups. So um, like I said, I do accounting, consulting, taxes, all that fun stuff. So I'm in accounting, <laughs> um, taxes, small business groups, so that if I'm looking for certain information, um, I'm in those groups and they're going to talk about different opportunities. Google is my best friend. Um, so you can always look on Google, type in your business and don't just type in small business grants, type in ice cream business, Oakland, California, black woman, like, a, you know, grant so that you can kind of look for something that you're going to quickly qualify for. Um, and then social media. So social media is fun for all the fun pictures and memes and all the other stuff, but there are a lot of grants that people post on Meta slash Facebook. Um, there are a lot of groups on there that will post about businesses um, and grants. If you go on Instagram and you join and you follow business-based companies, they're going to post about grants. Um, TikTok, which my daughter loves, <laughs> they actually post about grants on there. So, and then YouTube, the same place. So even though social media has a lot of other stuff, there's a lot of good information. If you're deciding to just literally tailor your focus on that information, there are um, ways to find grants. They'll also tell you how to apply for them, how to qualify. They'll even walk you through the process. So here's some tips for applying for grants. The first thing you want to do is you want to understand the eligibility requirements for the applications. So I talked about this before, right? You want to make sure that you are going to qualify. Um, unfortunately or fortunately, right, I have people who where I will, um, they'll reach out to me and then they'll say, oh, I'm looking at a grant and can you help me? And then I'll say, okay, great. Do you, you know, what are the requirements? And they don't respond for like three months. And it's typically like the day before the grant is due. And it's like, well, you need all this other stuff that we could have been working on for the last three months. So you want to make sure that you, if you have a grant, you print that grant out, post it somewhere, and then start ticking off the requirements. Um, interviews. Some grants are going to say, what is your why? What is your story? Why did you start your business for you to qualify. So know your why. Um, do not make your why because I want to make money, you know, or you know, or I want to give back to the community. Or something so general that everyone says, or you should never say, you know, um, your why should be, hey, for me personally, I grew up in the Bay Area. Um, I there was a lot of mom and bop. Uh, mom and pop businesses, I would see them close continuously. I never really understood why until I started, you know, looking into it. And it wasn't because they weren't great at what they did. It was because their financials, they didn't understand money, you know, and those type of things. So for me, I love numbers. My mom worked the IRS. My dad worked at the um, Bank of America. So I just love numbers. And so my why for starting my business was because I am passionate about small business owners and helping them grow and succeed in their business. Um, and I also wanted to be able to be flexible as far as spending time with my daughter. So you want to have your story so that when you apply for a grant, it's going to resonate with the person that's receiving the application. Now, if you are applying for a huge grant, you may want to consider hiring a grant writer. They are not cheap, <laughs> but um, if that's their expertise, they are typically going to be worth it. Um, I myself have clients who are nonprofits. We do have some um, other nonprofits that have grant writers, and they're good at what they do. Um, talked about this before. Apply for smaller grants. This is going to kind of help you understand that process so that you can keep applying for grants on a larger scale. 
Keep your financials updated. When you're applying for a grant, they do not want to see your tax return from 2021 only. They want to see your tax return from the current prior year, and they want to see your financials from um, typically at least the prior year, but maybe the prior quarter. So right now we're in May. They want to see Q1 2023 financials. You have to keep this information up to date. The reason is a grant is free money that you don't have to pay back. They want to know that they're not giving money to someone who's not going to use it properly. They want to make sure that the company that they're giving it to or the person they're giving it to is someone who's diligent about how they're um, taking care of their money. Do they have a bookkeeper that's going to help them keep track? Or do they know how to do it themselves properly? When you're applying for a grant, you're giving that application to someone like myself who does accounting bookkeeping. We want to see that that information is accurate. Create a folder for your grant applications to uh, immediately apply so that once you someone tells you about a grant, you can just click through and apply and just keep doing it and treat it like a job. You know, um, set a timer every Tuesday for an hour and just do nothing but look for grants and apply for grants. Then we have investors. So you guys are in San Francisco, so we are all familiar with um, investors, which is huge in Northern California. So when you're trying to get an investor, first thing you always want to have is you want to have a business plan. Um, the business plan should have an executive summary. What is, who are you? What is your business about? What does it do? How much money do you want? You need to have a company description and the organization. So what does the company do and who do you have on your team? They're looking to see if, hey, okay, well, Phyllis is good at accounting and finance, but she does not like marketing at all. So does she have someone on her team that will post about marketing, things of that nature? Like who does she have on her team to make it a strong team so that we can give her this money? Um, do you have a marketing plan with a target market? And no matter what you do, your target market is not everybody. So who is your primary target market? What are your products and services? How does that differentiate from anybody else? Um, so, you know, if you do ice cream, what's special about your ice cream that no one else is going to do? Do you have your financials, profit and loss, balance sheet, budget, forecast, and cash flow statement? And I'm going to say this because I've helped clients with business plans. All the other things, summary, description, target market products, that's all great. Uh, anybody who's investing in your business, the first thing they want to do is they want to see those financials. They want to look at that and they want to look at the financials. They want to also make sure that the financials that you have match up with the rest of your business plan. What I see sometimes is someone has a really great description and all these pages about all these products and services and the financials are like two pages and they don't logically make sense or match up with the rest of the business plan. An investor is going to have somebody on their team who's going to be able to rip that apart. Make sure your financials are strong so that when you uh, have an investor and have the opportunity to speak with one, that your information is in place. The other thing you want to have ready is your pitch and presentation. So, you know, some investors, you may just email them and they'll look at it and get back to you. Other ones are going to want you to think of um, Shark Tank, for example. They're going to want your pitch. They want to see that you can communicate, they, especially if you have something where you're going to be in sales. What's the presentation? Have that ready. Practice that so that if you are sitting on the BART train somewhere and you just happen to be an investor, you don't have time to like give them your 30 page business plan, but you're able to describe what your business is, get that opportunity to meet with that investor so that they can um, invest in your business. So always have that information ready to go because opportunities, especially if you're in San Francisco area and you know anywhere in Northern California, there are plenty of investors. Return on investment. So you need to understand what you're offering to that investor before you speak with one. The first thing is equity. What equity is, um, and I just mentioned Shark Tank. It's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite shows to watch because all the different people on the show kind of talk about different things, right? So equity in your business is how much of your business are you giving away? So right now, if just me, I own 100% of my business. If I was going to get an investor, am I giving up 5%, 10%? 50%, you know, what am I willing to give up for X amount of money? You need to know that answer that question, which would be answered in having a business plan. Um, repayment of the investment with interest. So maybe an investor is saying, I don't want any equity. I'll give you $100,000, but you're going to give me a 5% interest rate and I want it back. That is kind of like a business loan. This would be good for people who may not qualify for a standard business loan, 
but they have this investor who's willing to invest in them because they believe in what they're trying to accomplish. And then you have a royalty agreement. Um, if you watch Shark Tank, there's Mr. Wonderful. That's what he talks about. But what a royalty is, is you sell a product, the t-shirt. Um, I sell it for $20. A royalty is for every shirt I sell, I'm giving him a dollar off the top. So you want to make sure that you know exactly what you want. We don't get too excited if you have the opportunity to speak to an investor about just taking anything because you don't want to ever, ever, ever look back and regret that because once you lock yourself in that to that type of contract and you don't honor it they will sue you so you want to make sure that you understand what you're going to be doing which is why business plan is important and then where to locate investors um one place is online sites like angel list or seed invest business meetings so if you go to different join different business groups business meetings and you know how to speak about your business in a way that other people are going to want to speak with you um that's why i said make sure you have your pitch ready my first client i ever got i was at a networking event and i was just talking about how i just started my business and i want to do bookkeeping for small business owners we had this great conversation and she hired me on the spot i had no clients before that whatsoever, but I was passionate about what I was ready to do. So you want to make sure that you're able to take advantage of any opportunities that you have to talk about your business. LinkedIn is also a really great place to find investors. Accelerator program. What accelerator program is, is you have your business, you apply to get into this program. At the end of the program, if you follow all the rules and you have done what you needed to do to be successful, they will offer you an investment in your business. And then location based. So Silicon Valley, you know, um, San Francisco, these are great places to find investors. So you guys are in a prime location to be able to find investors for your business. The importance of finance. So I know I've talked about this throughout the whole presentation, but I'm going to keep pressing the importance of this because it's what you have to do to be able to get a grant, a loan, or an investor. They all are going to want to look at your financials. They want to look at your profit and loss. They want to know what your budget is. They want to know what your forecast is. They want to know if I give you this money, what are you going to do with it? Why are you going to do this with it? When am I getting my money back? How am I going to get my money back? And are you going to do the right thing with it? The more money that you ask for, the more details that you have to have. So remember one of the first things I said to do was you can use your savings account, right? So you're using your savings account. You don't have to tell anything. You just take the money out of there, right? If you're using a credit card, you don't need any details. You just have to have a strong enough credit score to get a high enough um, credit, right? But now when you're starting to get down to business loans of uh, four or five, six hundred thousand dollars, millions of dollars, um, you know, I have clients uh, who are nonprofits. One just got a grant for seven hundred thousand dollars. It's very specific to get that type of grant. They're not looking at financials from fiscal year 2022. They want from April 2023. They want extreme details. So the more you're asking for, the more they're going to want to see. And you want to keep your information up to date. The worst thing that you can do when it's time to apply is to say, oh, I haven't done my taxes in two years. Well, then how do you even know if you qualify to um, what you qualify for and if you qualify? And then your personal finances are also important. Please do not fall for the Facebook ads that say, or Facebook groups that say, hey, all you need is these things and I'll get you, you know, um, a business loan or a grant. There's always some caveat to it. Um, there's always some, you know, kind of iffy thing about it. You know, um, as we've seen over the last couple of years, there's been a lot of people in jail because they did fraud with the PPP loans and that's all of these other things. The IRS at some point will catch up to you and it's just not worth it. So make sure your, your personal finances are in order while you're working on your business to make it easier to be able to qualify for these things. Last but not least is talk to a professional, right? So if your expertise is not any of these things, it doesn't hurt to have a conversation with the professional who's going to guide you in the right way. Increase your knowledge. Take these type of webinars, go on Google, Facebook. There's so much information out there. Listen to podcasts. Um, you know, people say, well, I don't have time. You can, in your car, um, as you're driving your kids to school, put on a money finance um, podcast, put on a entrepreneur podcast, you know, change your mindset and find the information that you need so your business can be successful. Preparation is key. I talked about this a lot throughout the whole pre uh, presentation is just have that information ready to go and then start today. Don't wait till January of 2024. Don't make it a new year's resolution. Don't make it a next Monday resolution. Like 
do it today right now because as you're starting today and continually getting ready, that when that opportunity comes, you'll already be ready to take advantage of that opportunity. So thank you so much. I am now going to go through uh, the questions. Feel free to type any questions that you guys have uh, in the chat. And then here's my information. My social media is PKJ Consulting. Um, and you can schedule a free 15-minute uh, consultation with me. And I will go through some of the questions. So let's see. Okay, so one, um, Aaron asked about how do you become a certified minority uh, business? So if you go to something like um, Women's Business Development Center or Minority, uh, actually, let me go back to that slide and I'll show you the name of it. So I don't have, so there's the Minority Business Development Agency. They can help you apply to become a certified minority owned business or the National Minority Supplier Development Council. Those two offer the opportunity to become a minority or a woman owned business. How do you find your Q reports if you use QuickBooks? So I'm not sure what Q reports are, um, but if you're talking about financial reports, um, if you're using QuickBooks, you reconcile your books, you go to your uh, reports and you should see your profit and loss financial statement, balance sheet, cash flow, all the different types of reports. Uh, so Priyanka asks, what are the times of years when grants are in season? Grants are every day, today, yesterday. There's not a in season for grants. It's a every single day there is a new grant. Um, and also grants are continual. So there's never like a special time to apply. And we have Marcus asking about equipment loans. So here's his question is on equipment loans, you mentioned service industries are not included. Would that include equipment for rental services? So it's not that service industries aren't included, but equipment, they're typically looking at like big, massive equipment. So um, like construction, something huge, not like if you're maybe just renting out some like a table or something, they're not, that's not going to be the type of equipment loan that you'll be able to get. With an invoice loan that involves a contract with a government, um, is loan only eligible for open invoices or can the, or the overall value of the contract? So um, invoice loans is not just for government contracts. It could be any type of invoices that you have. I was just using the government as an example of a company that doesn't really pay as quickly. So if you have, so like for myself, I'm a service-based industry. Um, I Most of my clients, they're not with the government or at all. But if I apply to get an invoice loan, they will look at how quickly do my clients pay their invoices and they would give me an invoice loan based on what I have in my QuickBooks account. So Talia asks, where can I find a good guide to create a budget cash flow statement forecast? Um, so I would just Google that. There's, I mean, there's plenty of resources. If you email me, I can give you like a standard Excel template. Um, but really, you want to be, depending on what size your business is or how far you've gotten your business, using something like QuickBooks is the best way to do something of that nature. Um, also, if you're trying to create a uh, business plan, you can look on Live Plan. They also help with budget, cash flow statements, and forecasts. Uh, Teresa asks about funding opportunities focused on individuals for tribal communities. I would say yes. I'm not an expert on that, but honestly, there are fundings for every type of business. Okay, so Yolanda saying Q3 report. So in your QuickBooks account, Yolanda, there's the, all the financial reports are in there. So Q3, Q1, Q2, if you're using QuickBooks, then all of your reports, you'll be able to run all of those. Um, if I obtain a grant in California, can I use it in another state? That is a great question. It depends on the requirements for that specific grant. So each grant has its own this is what you can use the money for, and these are the requirements. So that just really depends on the specific grant. Any other questions? 
uh, Tatiana asked for grants for immigrants. So same answer. Um, as far as like very specific grants like that, I know I used to live in Los Angeles. I do believe I saw grants for immigrants. So it's literally like Google grants for immigrants and you'll probably see companies that definitely uh, offer grants for that type of thing. Any other questions? You're welcome, Christine. Oh, and also, I don't want to pronounce your name wrong, but uh, Siobhan, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Um, she put in there about SCORE. SCORE is a very, uh, thank you. <laughs> um, SCORE is a really great resource um, for, she's correct, has really great resources. Um, I will say um, that's how I was located to do this webinar. I actually do webinars with SCORE, so thank you for pointing that out. Um, and Remy did mention Immigrant Risings has opportunities to get grants. So thank you for that resource. Any other questions? You're welcome, Tanya. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jenna. Uh, yeah, so Benjamin, if you go to um, my website or if you go to, let me, sorry, if you go to this link here and I'll actually, I'll drop, I'll drop my information in the uh, chat box so you guys can have it. Uh, Yolanda, you can apply for hundreds and hundreds of grants. I have a client, I think she makes a business out of applying for grants, so there's not a number. You can apply for as many grants as you want. And there's not a specific number that you can't receive. All right, Kirstie, I think we're done. Thank there's no other questions. Thank you so much, Phyllis. That was so good, so comprehensive, so much good information. I was nodding my head throughout the whole presentation. It was great. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. All right, everyone. Um, I'm going to send the recording link to everyone after um, the after the recording is finished. Um, I want to thank you for joining us. And again, I want to thank Phyllis for such a good presentation and happy Small Business Week. Happy Small Business Week, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone.